Five years after the original episode, rewritten and revamped for 2022, these are the updated basics on everyone's favourite little yellow Autobot. Movie star, merchandising icon and one of the most famous faces of the Transformers franchise, Bumblebee. The toy that would become the original Bumblebee was first released as part of the Japanese toy line Microchange in 1983. The figure transformed into a super-deformed Volkswagen Beetle and was imported by Hasbro to become part of the first year of the Transformers toy line in 1984. Bumblebee was one of the line's small-scale Autobot mini-vehicles and was available in both yellow and red variants, but true to his name, all the marketing depicted yellow as his real colour. A profile for Bumblebee was penned by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky, who characterised him as the little brother of the Autobots, an upbeat, plucky youngster who looked up to the bigger, tougher bots and often took risks to prove his worth to them. Though physically weak, his small size and unassuming vehicle mode made him a good spy, allowing him to sneak into places his comrades couldn't. Bumblebee played a key role in the earliest issues of the Marvel comic book, making first contact with humankind. Injured in a Decepticon attack, he was found by Buster Witwicky, who took what he thought was a damaged car back to his father's auto shop, only to discover it was really a robot from outer space. Bumblebee would have a couple of spotlight adventures in the early years of the series, including stories written exclusively for the United Kingdom's version of the comic, which usually saw the little bot landing himself in trouble by going off on his own and running into the Decepticons while he was all alone. It was in the Transformers animated series that Bumblebee really rose to prominence. He was one of the first characters to appear on screen in the show's pilot miniseries, which also saw him put his espionage skills to use planting a bomb in a Decepticon-controlled mine. But his role in the cartoon was redefined in the first episode to follow the pilot when he was joined on a spy mission by the Autobot's human ally, Spike Witwicky. This marked the beginning of a friendship that recast Bumblebee as the show's kid appeal character, the cheerful little buddy who hung out with humans. Spy missions and attempts to prove himself didn't factor into his further adventures in the series. Instead, his friendship with Spike became his defining attribute and made him a mainstay of the show all the way through its first two seasons, appearing in more episodes than any other Autobot except for Optimus Prime. Reflecting his popularity, Bumblebee's toy was the only Autobot figure from 1984 that wasn't discontinued in 1986. Its continued availability earned him a role in The Transformers The Movie, in which he and Spike survived being eaten by the monster planet Unicron, and continued appearances in a reduced role in the cartoon's third season. Further, inspired by the negative audience reaction to the deaths in the movie, when Hasbro eventually did discontinue Bumblebee's toy in 1987, rather than retire the character, they instead created a new toy of him, upgrading him into a tougher, more mature form named Goldbug. The story of Bumblebee's upgrade into Goldbug was told in both the cartoon and the comic, each putting their own spin on it. In the cartoon, Bumblebee was injured by a rampaging Superion and rebuilt by one of the alien Quintessons at the direction of Optimus Prime. In the comic, a catastrophic misunderstanding led to him being blown to bits by the human military team G.I. Joe, who then rebuilt him after realising their mistake with help from Ratchet. The UK comic told its own alternate version of events, in which Bumblebee was blasted to smithereens by the time-travelling bounty hunter Death's Head and rebuilt by the junkie on Rekgar. The cartoon ended shortly after Bumblebee's upgrade, so Goldbug didn't get to do very much in it, but he did appear a little in the Japanese-exclusive sequel series The Headmasters. The comic book, on the other hand, made Goldbug a main cast member again. He went on the run with Blaster when the pair could no longer tolerate the tyrannical leadership of Grimlock, and he helped bring Optimus Prime back from the dead. After Goldbug's toy was discontinued in 1988, he was phased out of the comic, one of the many victims taken offline by a cosmically powered Starscream. But his absence was short-lived. 
In 1989, a third Bumblebee toy was released, this one a Pretender, a kind of Transformer who disguised themselves as a human being using an organic armoured shell. And this ensured that Goldbug was soon resurrected in the comics pages, rebuilt by Ratchet into Bumblebee once more and restored to life by Pretender technology. One further Bumblebee figure, a non-transforming Action Master, was released in 1990. This year marked the end of the original Transformers toy line in America, and as the curtain fell, more toys of Bumblebee had been released in the series than of any other character, with one version or another of him being available in six out of its seven years on shelves. It was no great surprise then that when the line was relaunched a few years later as Transformers Generation 2, Bumblebee was front and centre. In 1993, his original toy was recoloured in golden chrome, and in 1995, he was reimagined as a metallic gold concept race car in the GoBot subline. But after Generation 2 came to an end, Bumblebee fell out of the spotlight. Though it's almost impossible to imagine today, Hasbro's inability to secure a trademark on his name meant that they released no new Bumblebee toys for over a decade. The character himself made appearances in Generation 1 themed comic books in the early 2000s, but he was absent from every new mainline cartoon and toy line. 2002's Transformers Armada came the closest to including him. In this series, the Minicon spark plug seems to have been designed to resemble him, and during the development of the series, Bumblebee was even considered as a name for the young Autobot who would become known as Hotshot. On the surface, Hotshot was similar to Bumblebee, being the series' youthful, yellow, kid-friendly Autobot, but his personality and character arc were much more like that of the classic Autobot Hot Rod. Not so much the cheerful little brother that Bumblebee had been, but a hot-headed warrior with dreams of glory, who matured over the course of the series and eventually took on a leadership role himself, something that would wind up indirectly influencing depictions of Bumblebee in years to come. Bumblebee was finally brought back to the fore by the 2007 live-action movie, for which Hasbro at last re-secured the use of his name. The film drew heavily on the original cartoon for its depiction of Bumblebee, casting him in the central role of friend and guardian to human Sam Witwicky. But while he was still young and impetuous, the small, weak Bumblebee of Generation 1 was left in the past. No longer a dinky Volkswagen, the movie incarnation of B was a butt-kicking Camaro muscle car who could take on Decepticons twice his size. His most distinctive new attribute was a damaged voice box. Unable to speak, he communicated only in audio snippets played through his radio. You will always be my friend, Sam. The movie immediately returned Bumblebee to being one of the Transformers franchise's most prominent characters after his years away. Since its release, he's become a fixture of the brand, appearing in virtually every new series, with major roles in cartoons, comics, games, all the movie sequels, and even his own dedicated self-titled solo film, plus more toys than almost any other character. The movie was hugely influential on how later series would depict Bumblebee, though some have continued to present him as a cute little car like the original series, in most modern media he's a movie-style muscle car. And he's often designed with insect-like features such as big eyes, door wings and stingers to complement his name and classic colour scheme. But whatever form he takes, next to Optimus Prime, he's undoubtedly one of the most famous Transformers there is. The first new series to star Bumblebee after the movie put the character back on the map was 2007's Transformers Animated, but the bee featured in this cartoon didn't much resemble the movie bot. You see, when Animated was being developed, Hotshot was planned to be part of its cast, but in the name of synergy with the movie, he was replaced with Bumblebee for the finished show. However, the character's personality and role in the series didn't change, and the end result was a Bumblebee who had more in common with Hotshot than he did with the other bots whose name he shared. The youngster of the series, yes, closest friend to the Autobots' human ally Sari Sumdak, but also a smart-mouthed, thrill-seeking speed demon whose insubordinate glory-hound antics often caused the Autobots as much trouble as their enemies did. 
This appropriation of some of Hotshot's, and by extension, Hot Rod's personality traits, began an evolution of Bumblebee's character and place in the Transformers universe that would continue in 2010 with the debut of the Aligned Continuity, a unified take on Transformers lore that shaped the direction of the franchise for much of the next decade. Bumblebee played a major role in almost every part of this new continuity, which combined aspects of his different depictions from throughout the brand's history to create a definitive modern vision for the character, that included the maturation to leadership arc that had once been Hot Rod's defining characteristic. As seen in the Transformers Prime animated series, Bumblebee was a speedy muscle car who had lost his voice during the war on Cybertron, leaving him able to communicate only in beeps and buzzes that could nonetheless be understood by his human partner, Raph Esquivel. He was the scout for Optimus Prime's team, but he was still a tough and respected Autobot of some renown. He made several guest appearances in Prime's sister series, Rescue Bots, and its sequel, Rescue Bots Academy, where his biggest fans, Blades and Wedge, were thrilled to work with him. At the climax of Prime, Bumblebee's voice was finally repaired, and he struck the blow that killed Megatron, for which Optimus Prime promoted him from Scout to a true warrior class bot. This paved the way for B's leading role in the 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise, in which he led a team of Autobots rounding up escaped Decepticon prisoners on Earth. Being leader was tough, Bumblebee found it difficult to escape the shadow of Optimus Prime, and to get the other Autobots to respect him, but with perseverance he won them over and coined the perfect new catchphrase in the process. Autobots, let's rev up and roll out! During these years, Bumblebee struggling with leadership, trying to get the Autobots to see him as something more than that little brother that they all liked but didn't necessarily take seriously, was a common theme in Transformers media, seen in the live-action films, and especially in IDW Publishing's comic books, which even included a dedicated Bumblebee Spotlight miniseries. IDW story saw the Autobots vote for Bumblebee over Hot Rod to become Autobot leader after Optimus Prime stepped down. This eventually led to him becoming joint ruler of Cybertron itself, trying to establish a new government after the end of the war. But leadership was a bad fit for IDW's Bumblebee, and after a near-death experience, he instead wound up helping Starscream overcome his worst instincts in the hope that he could be the leader the planet needed. In 2018, Bumblebee was taken back to his roots in his solo movie. Both a prequel to and a soft reboot of the other live-action movies, the film told the story of how Bumblebee came to Earth and lost his voice at the hands of the Decepticon Blitzwing. In addition to reviving his classic Volkswagen alt mode, the film also saw a return to the cuddlier, more childlike Bumblebee of old, after he temporarily lost his memories of the war thanks to amnesia caused by the injuries Blitzwing inflicted. He was found and cared for by Charlie Watson, who taught him the joys of life on Earth and helped him save the planet from the Decepticon Shatter and Dropkick. This movie was a big influence on the new cartoon released the same year, Transformers Cyberverse, which was also centred on a youthful, fun-loving Bumblebee lost on Earth with amnesia and a damaged voice box. The series followed Bumblebee and his Autobot friend Windblade in their search for his lost memories and for the crashed Autobot spaceship, the Ark. In the last few years, the newest cartoons and comics have featured an edgier characterization for Bumblebee, putting an angrier, angstier slant on the little guy. Whether it's IDW's 2019 reboot of their comics, which followed Bumblebee on his quest for revenge against the Decepticons for the murder of Rubble, a young Cybertronian he was mentoring, or Netflix's War for Cybertron cartoon, in which he appeared as a surly Energon scavenger who fell in with the Autobots after they hired him to find them fuel. With an entire toy line currently dedicated to him in the form of the buzzworthy Bumblebee series, new cartoon Transformers Earthspark, and new movie Rise of the Beasts on the Horizon, a 
and undoubtedly many more stories and toys beyond. However he's characterized in the future, it's a sure bet that the Transformers universe will be abuzz with the adventures of Bumblebee for a long time to come. And those are the updated basics on Bumblebee. Which of his newest cartoon, comic or movie adventures is your favourite? Share your pick in the comments. Like, subscribe and if you can, support the show on Patreon for more history and lore from the world of the Transformers. And come back next time for another updated episode.